All right, let's continue on with our exploration of large language models. We've looked at text generation and text summarization. Now we're going to deal with text classification. So you've got text and how do you classify it? You can do the usual sort of zero or multiple shots at, at this. We're going to do mostly zero shot in here, so we're not going to really give it examples. We're just going to say, hey, take this email letter to a, to a hypothetical professor and tell me what sort it is. We do give it at least the categories that we want to break it into. We could do a few shot or one shot where we give it additional examples of letters, but for this, it, it really does quite well, even with no examples, just reply, relying on what its foundation model actually knows. So here I start this one. Actually, I'm in GitHub. Let me open this in Colab. There we go. So I start here, like I usually do, where we, we have to get the OpenAI key and if you're using Colab, that should be in your secrets area. If not, set the environmental variable on your own and it will, it will get that. Be very careful about putting credentials inside of source code because you might accidentally upload this somewhere and then you're funding somebody else's use of, of AI. All right, text classification. So large language models have really revolutionized this field. I remember seeing many, many spam classification examples using a variety of techniques. Now this is this is really pretty pretty advanced. So I have here a couple of emails that I have stored here where they're just the typical types of email that a uh, that an instructor at a university might receive. And this code just basically loads them and you can see a sample one, the first email Dear Professor Larson, I am Alex Chen, leader of a team, Team Nova in the Data Challenge Spring Science. By the way, these were all generated with Gen AI. Um, so basically, these, uh, these are just kind of some requests that a student might, might, might send to you or, or, or others. I mean, instructors get lots of, lots of emails. So here are... Um, basically, I just quickly sort of categorized them into the four, at least the four most common ones that I get. Uh, spam, just marketing, they want to sell me something. What, get tons of those. Faculty, so faculty announcements, oh, we're having, we're having a happy hour somewhere, or here is some new procedure that we really want you to follow, Diff different things like that. Help, students basically asking for help on assignments, and then letters of recommendation. The, these four are really kind of the lion's share of my requests. And then other, I tell it other if it just can't figure it out. So here, you can see that it is going through all of these emails, and I think I have 10 of them, and it's classifying them. Well, the first one was spam, um, and then other, and things like that. Ah, this is slightly out of date. I do need to fix that. It's using GPT-4 Turbo. Uh, before the semester starts, I'm going to go through and make sure everything is using GPT-4.0. Uh, 4.0 Mini. This one wouldn't be too expensive, but GPT-4.0 Mini is smarter and it's less money, which is an awesome combination. And here, basically, is what I'm giving for my prompt. Classify the following email as either spam, and I, just, I define each of these, or other. So this is kind of one-shot-ish because I'm giving it some information. If I didn't tell it, I could tell it just spam, faculty, help, or letters of recommendation, and it would figure it out as best it could, or I could not even give that. But then it wouldn't know how many classes I want, the, these, these kind of things. Um, and then I basically say here, here is the... Um, and, and then I also tell it, if, if you are given an email where it's a student asking about assignment, give me, uh, try to tell me what, what assignment they're asking for. So here I go through all 10 of these, and I use that second prompt when I find an assignment. So if it is an assignment, then I find out which assignment number that actually was. And here you can see it goes through all of these. It says... Um, Email one is a letter of recommendation. Email two is a question about assignment seven. Email six is something else entirely. 
and email 10 is something else entirely. And this is another one that uh, I put together, which is, which is kind of often you'll want to classify, you'll want to pick out names in this. And often, if you look at, this is an interesting movement. This is the, I am not a, not a typo. So certain names, if Microsoft or Google doesn't particularly recognize it, your name will show up as a typo with the little red underline. And that is kind of annoying. It's like, okay, I am not a typo. Um, and it, they show you some of the, they used to have it right on the front page, but they used to have some of the most common names that there are a decent number of people with, with this name, but it just can't figure that out for whatever reason. So I used a bunch of these in here. Esme and Zara have been friends since college after graduation. They interviewed with, with Priti for a job at Tech, um, and I made up, so I made up a lot of, of names in here, both of companies, and I was kind of mean. I, some of the people, I didn't give them a last name, uh, and I intentionally made a mistake there and did not capitalize it. So I wanted to see, okay, for this type of thing, can the large language model figure out, using context, which of these are names and which of them are not? And you'll notice it picks out all of those names and it gives them to me, even though these are not real common names. Thank you for watching this video and definitely like and subscribe if this was helpful to you so that you don't miss other things from this course and other AI projects that I like to take on. Thank you for watching.